Hey everyone, welcome back. Today's video is dedicated to all of those projects that we put right at the bottom of our to-do list and kept pushing off because the weather was too bad. It is a glorious day in Ireland here today. The skies are blue, the sun is shining. It is six degrees, but it feels so much warmer and it's just a little bit blustery. There is a small breeze in the air and it feels so good to be back at home sharing an update with you in the tiny garden. I have been so distracted with the allotment, haven't I, the last three weeks. And a lot of you have actually reached out to me to say, am I gonna be continuing videos on the tiny garden? A lot of you shared with me that your allotment plots have actually closed or that you have downsized to a small backyard or front yard garden. So the answer is yes, I will be doing regular updates on my growing space. And if you are new here, my, grow my main growing space, which is here, is about eight square meters and then I have a small patio garden across the front and my brand new flower bed and my new pallet collar bed that I put in at, just in the winter and they're my main growing spaces. I have some great plans for this area here that I will share later on but today's video is all about catching up on the jobs ahead of spring to get ahead for the season that's to come. I've already been out here this morning and topped up my bird feeder because if there's one thing that brings me so much joy in this garden, it's when all the different varieties of birds visit me and me learning about all the different varieties and trying to see can I spot or attract some new wild birds to my growing space. Now that the days are getting a little bit brighter and a little bit longer, it makes those end of winter jobs just that little bit easier to do. So I'm hoping today to actually move some of my onions. So I started onions back in the first week of September last year. I used a Japanese variety called Shinkinyu and I have them in my raised planter by Elho. But what I've noticed since obviously the days are getting longer, they have started to put on a lot of growth, but they are flopping over a little bit. And I also think that they might be planted a little bit too close together. So I have my raised pallet collar bed that I have already got some parsnips and carrots sewn into, but I thought it might be an opportunity to give all of these onions a better chance if I transplant them. Now I know there is a very small risk that by transplanting them, I could stress them out and force them to bolt, but I'm just gonna give it a go because I think they're way too close together in that planter and they are showing signs of some sort of stress that they're flopping over, they're not standing up tall and strong so I need to do something in order to salvage whatever I have from this crop that I've done. It's my first time sowing onions from seed and obviously it's an unusual variety because I've sown them way back in September so I have no idea how they're going to turn out and I've also been trying to google this specific variety but there isn't a lot of information out there on this type of variety of onion. Obviously, most people sow them around December or in January, but obviously I've done it completely different. So they look healthy, they've lasted all through the winter, no frost damage, no nothing. So everything's looking kind of positive. I think I just need to give them a little bit of a boost. So I am gonna thin them out a little bit and then transplant some of them. So I have just put down a little wood chip path, which Rue is totally obsessed with. One of her favorite games is to go in and take a little piece of wood chip, run off with it inside the house, onto the sofa and chew it. <laughs> so she's gone up to the top of the garden to go and give that a little bit of a chew. But I do love the fact that I have wood chip down here. And I have noticed that since I moved the main bed in that growing space, that a few weed seeds have come up. So I think putting that on is gonna completely suppress that. I do need to get a little bit more, obviously bark to finish that little area, but at least it'll be slightly easier for me to walk along there as well, because it's been very, very sludgy the last few days. And that brings me to what I wanna do for that area. I'm thinking that I'm gonna get a mini greenhouse and pop it into the middle of that grow space. I think I'll be able to grow some tomatoes in there. I was sent some amazing varieties of tomatoes from so many of my friends that I need to do them like justice so I think if I can get a greenhouse, I'm gonna put it in there and get an angle grinder to move the metal pole that's in the way, that's actually concreted in. And I think it was used as a washing line pole, obviously before we moved in, but you would have seen it in the videos over the last few months. It's been there and probably wondering what it is, but that's what it is. She's doing zoomies now. <laughs> Where's it gone? Where's it gone? 
And the idea then is to obviously put the greenhouse literally where I'm standing. So I have seen some really cool designs online of different greenhouses that I can get to go into this space. So I'm super happy to obviously take out this metal pole that's behind me um, and yeah, hopefully do those tomato seeds some justice. And I saw a lot of people last year obviously growing them in their polytunnels and things like that. I'm not ready to put a polytunnel in at the allotment yet, but I do think maybe a polycarbonate or a greenhouse structure here will just do the exact same thing, obviously on a smaller scale. So there are some like half greenhouses, some really cool looking things out there that if I can get into this space, I think I'll be able to bring on seedlings and I'll be able to obviously plant in peppers, chilies and tomatoes into it. So that's the idea for this space here, which is a little bit barren at the minute. So I'm super excited for that. And um, yeah, let's get on and give you an update on the seedlings that have started because I've got a few little maintenance tips for those. So just behind me are my sweet peas. So I sowed these about two weeks ago and they have shot out of the soil. They are super tall, but I got a few recommendations to pinch them out after two or three leaves. So I think what I'm gonna do is do a mixture of two and three and see which way they turn out. So I'm just gonna pinch them out just as you would with chilies or any other kind of plant that you're hoping to bush out. So I think you do this a lot with flowers. So I'm trying to learn a little bit more about flowers so that I can bring in more pollinators into my garden. So the variety of sweet pea that I have is called Wild Italian. It's my first ever time trying sweet peas. They look super healthy. They are obviously flopping over a little bit because I've grown them indoors and they are climbers. Their little tendrils have just started to come out as they are looking to grab onto something and take off. But it will be a little bit longer before I plant them out in the garden and the allotment. So I'm just gonna pinch them out for now. Hopefully they get a little bit bushier and then in a couple of weeks, I'll be popping them straight into the ground. So these are my two blueberries. They are a variety called Britannia, Britannia Brigata, sorry, not Britannia. <laughs> I'll put the name on the screen, it'll be easier. And um, really productive blueberry variety. So I have two of them. And what I need to do is, this is my second year having these blueberries and there's a lot of growth all in the middle of them that I need to prune out so that I can obviously branches aren't overlapping and knocking the fruit off and all that kind of stuff which was a bit of a problem for me last year but being it the first year I didn't want to prune them obviously just got them straight from the garden centre and popped them into the container so obviously you probably shouldn't leave it as late as I am now but there still is enough time to prune them just make sure you get it done this week uh, because obviously they are starting to obviously bud and put on a bit of foliage so I'm going to go in and tidy these up and get them ready for spring because they are a super productive variety and I'm going to go to the garden centre and get a specific feed for these because they are a bit temperamental with their soil so no you're not having any more hey 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 you're not having any more so I'm happy enough with my blueberries I do think obviously it does look like I've taken a lot off them but in theory I actually haven't I've only taken probably two main branches out of the five or six that were on them and I have to clear out that middle space in order for the sun and the airflow and obviously the branches not to be rubbing against each other so they have grown in a bit of an odd way but hopefully I'll be able to get some shape in them next year and the year after and then grow into like a nice kind of claw shape I think that'd be wonderful so that concludes today's video in the garden I'll catch up with you in the allotment so I have just arrived at the plot it is just after five o'clock. I have finished work. And the reason I'm down here is to check on one of the projects that I did yesterday. I didn't get a chance to actually film all of it because it got really, really late in the evening and the sun went down and I was at the plot until about seven o'clock in the evening. So I've come up today to check on the progress and give you guys an update. But first, I'm gonna roll the footage of what I got up to yesterday, right now, to bring you up to speed on how things are looking. And I'll meet you right back here to give you an update on what's going on. Hey everyone, welcome back to the allotment. It is day eight and the sun is shining. It is absolutely amazing. I will need to take my jacket off because it is so sunny. And then when the sun hits you, it is so warm. Today I have to catch up on a few projects that I wasn't able to do when the weather was bad. I'm going to take a closer look at my raised beds, sort out the edging around them. Obviously I've left the middles of them clear because I want to put in grass pathways, but obviously where I was working away in the wet weather, some of the edging has kind of torn away. 
so I need to reinforce the edge in around it. I'm also going to go in, dig out some nettles at the front of the plot and along the side here because my aim is to then have a lovely wood chip border the whole way around the plot. And I have a few, now that the weather is good, I can actually have a proper look at the state of what is going on here. Now the weather's warmed up, a few weeds are popping through, so there are a few docks dotted around. So I'm actually gonna go in with a fork and dig those up because obviously perennial weeds, the no dig method doesn't quite work on those. So the nettles and the docks are the only things I'll be digging up. Thankfully, the nettles are mainly only on the border and at the front of the plot where the spuds are gonna go in. So that should be absolutely fine. I have got Rue with me today. I gave her a little treat. I bought up a little, uh, was it like dry cured like chicken stick? So she's loving that right now. I thought it was a better idea to give her a little dry chicken stick to chew today rather than the roots of rhubarb or anything else that she might find on the plot. So I'm going to get stuck in and start tidying up a little bit of this area here. I must actually give you guys an update on the roof and the shed leak. I think things are looking positive in there. I think the ground is going to take a little while to obviously dry out considering how much rain we had when I was up here last week. So I do think the tacks have worked but I might end up replacing the roof anyway maybe put one of those like polycarbonate kind of roofs in that kind of have the, the little humps the whole way through them it's very hard for me to explain that but um yeah I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with the shed I do really want to move the shed the very back of the shed is actually sunken into the ground so I don't know was that from the rodents that were burrowed in is there a leak in the water pipe I don't know so I'm going to check that out today as well so things are definitely drying out in here I did put the wheelbarrow just under this puddle that was here and a small bit of water was collected. Now it would have taken time for what was in the roof to dry out. So things are looking much better. It has actually rained today. So nothing new has come through. This looks like it's drying and the surface water is drying out. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that. So I'm gonna take you around the back of the shed just to show you what I mean by the back of it being quite wet. So down here it has completely dried out. It is a little bit hard to see just because the sun is so strong. But down here it was soaking wet I could barely move like literally if I just stick my foot into that it just goes straight the way in so I do need to dig all that out which would be great I can put that straight onto the compost heap but under here you can see that the shed has completely sunken into the ground like it's completely underneath all here and it shouldn't be like that like that should be propped up with some obviously airflow to go through the bottom of that so I do need to figure that out so the water pipe you would have seen in the plot tour runs all the way along here down and down the right hand side of the shed so I'm not 100% sure if it's that but I have turned it off because I have noticed a little leak coming through this connector tap that's here there's a slight leak that's coming down and obviously that's just going to make things super super wet as well which I don't want so I've obviously turned off those connectors. I think I need to tighten some things up there, but that's obviously not that's obviously contributing to the water issue at this end of the plot, which I do need to sort out. I did wonder if I came through and wood chipped all the back of this, would it help absorb some of the moisture or would it just get really wet and start rotting down? I don't know. So maybe wood chip would help. If you know, let me know. But yeah, tales of the shed aren't quite complete yet. And this shed, although I love it, is causing me some problems at the minute. <laughs> but enough about the shed, I'm gonna go crack on, get some of those docks up, some of those nettles, and straighten up some of those beds and hopefully get another bed and put that down.
so that was a little bit of an unplanned hailstorm. I did actually go out and have a quick whiz round the shed because a couple of you said run water off the top of the shed to see which way it runs because that might be the source of your leak problem and I have actually found it. So I see I'm going to have to put some gutter in along the top here because it's all dripping in the back corner here. So I wanted to say a massive thank you to Nightlight because obviously you were the one that actually said to me to check which way the water flows off and I think I have the exact same problem to you. The water is flowing off down to the right into the back corner and obviously all down the back corner of that shed is where my water ingress problem mainly is and obviously where a couple of the tacks are as well is where the water's coming through on that strip along that panel so not fully fixed I think guttering is definitely a good solution with a water butt so I may bring the water butt up from home and that might be an interim fix so before the hailstorm and I had to run inside the shed I did fix up my beds that are here beside me so the edging I don't think I left enough edging of cardboard around the perimeter of the beds so the weeds were actually starting to grow up through it so I've just gone back pushed all the mulch up and put a double layer of edging with cardboard down and then what I've done is just popped on planks of wood just to keep that cardboard down just whilst the weeds die down in the interim but they're looking a lot better now so I'm super happy with that I was kind of a bit disheartened when I turned up to the plot this morning and they I just saw like it just looked like it was riddled with weeds so I'm so much happier that I managed to get that done and just underneath me now is a whole load of surprises but I think it's the last of the surprises underneath the couch grass so the beds are still looking good and now you are up to speed with what I got up to yesterday I'm going to go and show you what I got up to in the evening that I wasn't able to film so I had a go at trying to repair the shed roof I got some great advice from one of the viewers called Nightlight about the shed so with it being raining yesterday, I was able to watch the way the water fell off the roof and it was falling onto the very back of the shed, which is why that corner is sinking. So the advice I was given was to maybe lift up the felt and put a piece of beading or wood along the edge of the shed to redirect the water. So that's exactly what I did. And I'm gonna give you a little look-see if I'm able to climb up here without slipping. Oh, so up here, I took off the this wood. I don't actually think there's a purpose for this wood. I think this is just decorative. If I painted it, I think it would look nice, but I don't think it actually serves a purpose for water not getting in. So I took this off, lifted back the felt. Now, some of the felt split on me. So I was trying to be really, really careful when I was trying to wedge the wood in. There's like three or four pieces that I ended up putting in here and they were pieces of pallet wood that I took off some of the pallets that I had. And I there's no signs of rot underneath here. So I'm so happy about that. So the wood on the roof is perfect, but it was just the roof felt itself felt a little bit brittle and it, it snapped on me in places. So it's definitely something that I need to readdress, but I don't actually know how successful it is until I take you into the shed and have a little look at the floor and what the status of that looks like. So let's go in and have a little look. Not too bad, I don't think. It started to dry out a little bit, so I'm super happy with that. There was a lot of surface water before I left, very similar to how it was the previous week. There's no water in that barrel either, and that is directly under where the drips are coming out from the roof. So that is a super positive. I think it's gonna be a temporary fix. I know it's not the perfect fix, it will need addressing. I will need to come up with a better solution for this shed. But all in all, I think I'm quite happy with that. And then I'm just gonna head around the back just to see what that's looking like and see how the soil's looking and give you a little bit of an update on actually what I'm gonna do around here because I'm not gonna move the shed. It's not in the plans. So I have to concentrate so much more on what I'm doing behind me than I am around here. So. Obviously, without the pallets in the way, I'm actually gonna put the flagstones around here just to make it a bit easier to walk around, have a storage area. But also, I think the area around here is gonna be shady in the summer. And I have really pale, 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 pale skin. So I think what I need to do is make sure that I have a shady spot so that I can obviously hide away in the peak of the sun in the summer and obviously a place for rue as well. So I think I'm gonna put up a little flower backdrop down here maybe even some lettuces so that I can obviously grow lettuces through the summer but 
I think this is actually going to be a great little shady spot for me and I don't need to get rid of it just yet. <laughs> So I wanted to say a massive thank you to Nightlight for all your wonderful advice on last week's video regarding the shed roof. It has been super helpful. Without that, I actually don't think I would have realized what to do with it. I probably just would have bought a load of extra stuff and still not known what I was doing. So I think that is a definitely gonna tide me over in the meantime, because I'm not gonna move the shed this season, even though I do feel like it's in the way, but actually I've learned actually it won't be in the way because I'm gonna be able to put the flower bed or the salad bed around there. And I think, see how the season goes, I anticipate that will be a shady area. And all in all, I need to focus my energy on clearing this side and getting everything ready so that I can actually plant some crops and have some abundance growing by summer of this year. So let me know what you think of this video, by the way, because I have just lumped a tiny garden and allotment together and it feels a bit odd for me. It's the first time I've kind of really done it. So you let me know, should I keep them separate? Should I put them together? Do you enjoy, I suppose, the weekly vlog of what I've got up to in the space of gardening? Just let me know, some feedback would be so wonderful. And I will see you all next week for another video garden related. See you then guys, bye. That sky is looking so moody.